to our um, June planning meeting. Today is Tuesday, the 13th of June. And first item on the agenda is 7023 declarations of any disclosable pecuniary interest. None declared. Obviously, if there are any arising, please state them at appropriate time. 7123, apologies for absence, Alan. Yes. Councillor Chris Brooks, Councillor Doug Jefferson, Councillor Terry Jeremy. Councillor Jeff Peters and Councillor Andrew um, Stewart. Thank you very much. So 72.23, the minutes to confirm the minutes of the planning committee held on the 18th of May 2023, which we received by full council on the 30th of May. And we're all happy for that, John. Sign those as a true record of the meeting. Agreed? Yeah. 73.23, planning applications. First one is A, Deer's Leap, 38 Norwich Road. So um, this is a variation of condition two on the original uh, application form. And uh, 112 was actually an approved set of plans, but they want to amend the site layout to include the installation of the substation onto site and the repositioning of the car parking layout in store and cycle store. So this is the basic site layout, which I'm sure you're all familiar with. And this is the new proposed layout. Now, they have gone out to the police and the police have made um, recommendations about bike security. And there have been previous comments about cycle racks and things, which they have now moved and made more secure. So they've, and they've uh, changed the cycle um, storage area because it was covered over and that tends to attract antisocial behaviour. So they have already made some some changes and there's a few more um, recommendations about the bike security, such as the type of uh, cycle um, stands that they have. Um, there was documents sent to Historic England and Angle and Water, but both of those said that it wasn't appropriate for them to yes. comment on the application form. <laughs> So um, this is the substation that they want to put in. If you looked in on the previous comment, the substation which is being built at the moment. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So that's the substation that we're looking at, and this is the substation. That's not very exciting. That's the elevations and the floor panel of the substation, um, and the car park. I'm just trying to remember from the previous. What's, I think they've just changed it around where the bin stalls were, isn't it? With the car parking layout, it's at the top, yeah. Because they've just moved them slightly. <laughs> That's the Norwich Road where you the top yeah. 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 Any comments? Uh, whereabouts is the pillbox? The stand the bottom right there, it's the rectangular bit, the wavy front there. That's still, still maintained. Thank you. Still some uh, just on the front elevation with the, um, are they just louvres on that substation? Does it say what colour they are? Oh. Can we, can we... I'll have to go and read it off there because that is way too small. Because that, to that is yeah. obviously fronting onto the road in this part of the streetscape. So, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Alternative roof design to harmonise with adjacent premises are acceptable, providing they still have the standard concrete slab detail below. In all cases, the vote is to send the for consideration. This is Antina fitted externally. Is this all about clearance? Um, access like, do we want to make any comment about colours or on that? If it's going to be bright green or do we want to? I think they just change that because that's the highlight. It's a bit of a secret yeah. I don't think it's actually going to be that colour. Any other comments? Happy support? Yep. Moving on then to item B, four to six Castle Street. Um, 
So is this going to say a change of use from Class E commercial business and services? Sorry, Class E C to Class E B cafe to the ground floor areas with internal alterations and new business signs and a use of Class C3 for residents or flats to the first floor. So a high rose wrote in said it was noted that there's no on-site parking facilities exist for the residential element of the proposal. However, given the town centre location, proximity of public transport and public car parking, it would be difficult to substantiate an objection in this respect. If you are minded to grant approval, please impose the following conditions. And they always have some standard conditions that they put in. And SDH 14 is one of them, and that is that no part of the structure to include the faces um, shall overhang or encroach upon the highway land, and no gate door, ground floor window shall open outwards over highways because of um, a highway safety. The environmental historic uh, heritage, you know, environmental health officer had concerns about the lack of bin storage. And he said that for the proposed domestic properties, it would appear that the plan submitted um, for that intention is to be stored outside the window of the neighbouring residential property and in front of the existing street name, which is that's not acceptable. So he accepts that visitors to the proposed cafe would not like to see the household waste bins immediately outside the cafe windows. And the only other frontage to the premises would be in front of the access doors. He does question whether it means it would be acceptable to store four bins outside the window of the neighbouring residential property. Um, should the applicant be able to provide a more suitable solution to the domestic waste storage in respect of the residential properties, um, then he would recommend approving the development needs in line with the application details. But he does feel they need to alleviate his environmental concerns. Um, his uh, comments are also based on the fact that the signage is not illuminated, uh, will not be illuminated. And then he doesn't want illumination in the interest of the amenities of nearby residents. It's still a priority insurance place. Though. It is, yeah. So let me just go across into the next ones for you. Oh, it's not doing it. This is where it finally does it and it moves like three at a time. So that's the um, site area. It's not particularly good plans that we were given. Quite helpful. <laughs> yeah. So that's the, our existing elevations. So I think that's, you know, on, on the... That's probably the better one. There, as you say, it's the old Priory Insurance building. Yeah, um, there's the picture of there's it. There's been a notice up cafe opening soon for the last couple of years, been stuck <laughs> up there. Um, yeah, I think that bin thing was quite pertinent given the, our last conversation we had you know, last month. Yeah. Um, so I think that would be a, a big one for us to object on. Um, there seems to be grand sort of feeling amongst ourselves last time round about the, the lack of bin storage. Over the floor over. I have also made some issues about parking. I'm highly concerned. Imagine we've got the cafe at the top of the top of Castle Street now, and then that roundabout is becoming signal lane traffic in the of cars there. If we had parking outside that cafe, opposite that link road, that's an excellent way to have. And, and the bins as well. I mean, we've all seen the issues with the big blue bin outside the delicatessen. On the moment when they put it out there, they put it on the pavement. The bins on the pavement. They've got to be industrial bins, big bins, and they're not normal waste bins for the cat. So what are their mobility screeners and bikes for that kind of stuff? Mm -hmm. There's already lots of complaints from residents about the amount of bins that are placed up on, all down Castle Street. Yeah. So that's it's already an issue. Um, by us passing it, I think it makes it worse. But that, it makes reference only to the um, property bins rather than the commercial. Yeah. So we could end up with a situation like we have uh, out on King Street here, where we've got what would appear to be household bins being used for commercial waste, mm. you know, constantly full. The cafe, will the, will the commercial bins be out the back, though? 
Anyway. There's no access to the back there. Um, look at it. The, 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 no archway, the archway that you see is, is for a separate property to the right. Black is yes. completely separated from that, so there's no access to the rear um, at all, I believe. There's a bin issue anyway. For the, so. This, this reminds me of the one we looked at that was uh, planned to be built at the, um, at the back of Pike Lane car park. Yeah. When we mentioned that they were going to say they were going to park all their vehicles on, on that car park. So that's great. Yeah. Well, of course, the link car park would be the ideal opportunity for people if they were living in there to get free parking. Again, we're, we're so restricted on parking in the town. The link parking is quite well used well, as it yeah, is, yeah. that's quite full. So I sense to an objector. Yeah. 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 Um, on the grounds of the environmental health officer. Um, potential comment for you to consider is support the environmental health officer's concerns reference bin storage and expect alternate solutions to be found. Waste bins on Castle Street footpaths are already an issue with residents and yeah, residents and visitors. And I think we also need to raise the parking issue again. Yeah. And so Double would, yellow lines. What would you like to say about the parking? Uh, it will put extra pressure on existing car parking in the area, yeah. which is already a short supply. Lack of. Yeah. Yeah, double yellow lines. Mm -hmm. The lack of on site parking. <laughs> It exacerbate current conditions. Yeah. Or exacerbate current shortage of parking. Yeah. And then where's the cooking bench go? Sorry, then. If they're cooking, they're going to the vent. Where was that piece positioned? I haven't explored it. It's not going to show it on there. one of those as an afterthought it'll come back as yeah. a perspective <laughs> well, thing going through the wall but this is a change of use one as well isn't it yeah. as opposed to a full yeah you're right if there's a cafe there will be some yeah. emergency yeah. insurance brokers didn't need anything <laughs> and micro <-ramen>, you know <laughs> i think pursuing an alcohol license for the cafe as well it's not that, no, that would be a licensing yeah. issue that would come separate right. but, um, at the moment there's nothing indicating that that would be so well, that's, that's not a full planning application, it's just a change of use. Yeah, that's right. We have had some very similar to this where they wanted to put a takeaway at the top of the street. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's got that to be parking, you know, they want to make a difference. It used to be a Jadari Dwarf. Yeah, so yeah. we have that. Yeah, yeah. It's a, that was a bad junction, as this is. Well, yeah. Yeah. As they coming out. We also need to back up the highways, but the conditions that we on the Hanging signs, what yeah, you? and support highways. Support. No sign there. No, I can't see a chimney on there. That's an issue as well. So can we mention that about support highways, comments, and conditions? Yeah, it's just mm -hmm. about the, the lack of units, extraction units. Uh, yeah, lack of information on extraction. I mean, I'm, I'm for one, I'm all for people in businesses, but the fact that they don't have access to the back and nowhere to put the rooms, it's just too small of a space for them to yeah. Yeah. Okay. With a different location, I'll be more for it, but from there, it's just difficult. Okay, so I think we've got enough there. I'm happy with that. Right, moving on to number C, or letter C. Oh, I'm quite lame. Well, this is the one next door to the site that we discussed last month. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> which I think, if I remember rightly, we had some yeah, correspondence yeah. from those people living. In yes. So, so, sorry, Chris. Sorry, the residents who complained about the last of the quite happy for this to go ahead because they've had issues with anti social behaviour in this premises. Right, the landlord now is going to stick it into terms and they're wishing they're hoping to go away then. They are in full support of this. Okay. Mm. Okay. Mm. 
So, um, this application is the proposed alterations to existing dwelling to form two separate dwellings. So, to form the new separate residential dwellings, the internal layout only requires minor changes, and the external envelope of the building only requires two new access doors being added in existed or extended openings. The footprint of the building does not change and the site around the building only requires minor changes to add another access gate into the garden space and to split the existing dwelling garden space into two. The existing historic features and merits of the building will not be altered. The beams visible within the interior are generally of a decorative nature and not structural. It is understood that as part of the conversion works approved in 1999-2000, a new internal structured timber frame was constructed to provide stability to the external walls and to provide the new internal arrangement. The new dwellings look to utilise the existing building's layout and services, keeping the existing decoration and styles unchanged. Therefore, the change of use will have no detrimental effect on the listed building. So basically, they're um, splitting it into um, Two um, internal additions obviously will be the party walls to split the dwellings, removal of an existing bedroom on the first floor to allow for the stairs to access the first floor, splitting it, and removal of existing ground floor bedroom to create a ground floor living room, kitchen, dining space in the second unit. Uh, additional entrance door to the front elevation to allow access into proposed unit two, an additional proposed rear door to the rear elevation and existing extended window opening to allow access to unit one. They're going to put a fence in to split the gardens and they're going to put additional gates in to uh, allow access into both gardens. And so again, that's the area there. This is where the actual dwellings are, that's where they're going to split the gardens. So the external elevations, that's the uh, front and rear, and this is them putting in the extra two doors and extending the window. The historic building officer has no objection to the proposed minimal changes, and they did um, have conversations and previous approval for the con conversion in 1999. So we'll just come back to that where you've got to split the gardens. Yeah, oh, that one? Yeah. So the, the archway comes under where the one is, and then this area there, that is for presumably frontage onto Gilbert Street, is it? Because their gardens are separate. So this is where they're putting the extra pins. Yeah, so they're, they're the two garden spaces yeah. that we're talking about. Yeah. So the archway comes through here to this access area yeah. here. That is for, presumably, is it for Guildhall Street? Or are these apartment spaces allocated to these I buildings? think it's just to get out the back of the gardens. Sorry, the park, when you're pointing that, the house there, the two, there's are two parking spaces in that space there. The uh, and the house over the flat for people living overlook the head is our other head access, and that's where park. And that big chair is the front, yeah. yeah so, part so, the so, those parking spaces are for and, and they're part of the space of the wall, it's not that space in the back here, but they're home back there, back there. So, so basically, there's more than enough room so that they can get out of that. Yeah, stuff. I'm just wondering if there's parking, you obviously, you're, you're splitting it into two, so you've got two dwellings there. Yeah. Whether the parking thing just being provided or not. Like one of the concerns I would have with something like that is that at the moment, the people that use that, it's almost like an HMO, the people, they don't have cars. Now you're putting it into two separate dwellings. That's going to be two, three, you know, two cars per dwelling. They've only got two car parking spaces for the two properties. And you can keep talking about car parking. We keep talking about, you know, where the bin's going to go. Um, is that a consideration? Should be a consideration, but there's no not enough car parking space for those properties. I agree with you, Dave. It's but the trouble is when you look at some houses on Cloverfields, which are four bedrooms, the yeah, they've got one space in front of a garage. Yeah, and you know you see the mayhem that that causes. So 
I mean, I suppose in a way, at least they've thought about car parking spaces. You know, at least they've got some. I'm just not quite sure, as you were saying there, if, if that's just a turning area or where the division of that garden finishes off, because that's that looks like it's just parking now. I think that's, the division is purely a little yard, isn't it, with yeah. a little fencing? So, it's, it's so they've just thing. split the current garden. So that communal yeah, no, area. No, I've got that. Yeah. But what I mean is... What is so, that big area there? Yeah. So this bit here, so if they're going to drive in a park, surely this isn't... That's why I was trying to forget to... Know, that was... If it is, they've got loads of parking. Yeah, if that's someone's... So if we go back in the You see the square bit where it says the number? 19. See that? That's where it comes. And then that all that space, the other side of the car park. So we can't be cars. So that there is their car park. Yeah. Got it. Fair enough. Right. So little. Yeah. And, and to be fair, yeah. it's out of sight a little bit. And the gate is locked as a gate across the front, so that no one, you know, moving behind there, is it? Yeah. I, I've not been behind there. Yeah. There was um, some imagery last month when they were showing that over. Yeah, we could see it then. I can show you the residents are more than happy to have this document. They have suffered with what's happened. The fact that you said about HMO, some of the people who said we're moving were probably without the landlord's permission. Yeah. Yeah, no security there for the people that live there. People moving in and out all the time. It's yeah. it's a nightmare. Well, since we want to support, obviously yeah. taking on David's point about parking, but I think I support it. At least we've got you know a, a space for each dwelling there. I think we can support if everybody's happy. Yeah, yeah. So that there's two, both C and D there, because it is a listed building, we have yeah. to take the two plans separately, one for the listed building consent, one for normal planning consent. So we're then on to E, um, 45 Mackenzie Road. So this is the um, demolition of the existing outbuilding and erection of a timber prefabricated single-storey granary annex for ancillary use to the main dwelling. So, this application seeks to erect a single storey granny annex within the curtilage of an established C3 dwelling. The use of the annex will be ancillary to the main dwelling with strong functional links between them. It is intended that the occupants will be regularly preparing and eating meals in the main dwelling, watching television, relaxing, socialising with the family, and using two uh, existing household facilities. There will be no separate address, post box, utility meters, services, parking, garden area, or curtilage or access. This proposal is for an ancillary granny annex that will be existed within residential curtilage. And it is um, the, uh, for future occupancy, the applicant will be happy to agree to an appropriate condition restricting the uh, use of the annex to only ancillary. So, um, this is basically to accommodate uh, the needs of a member of the family. So they just mentioned the existing outbuilding being demolished. Demolished. Is that yeah. a, we've got any um, details of that? Uh, can we see that? So this is um, the actual site. And this is what they're putting in. And this is by, I checked what's coming in this. And I looked at what they do. And um, these are very expensive annexes. It's a prefabricated building. It is, yeah. 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 But, but it's, it's a, literally a, a yeah. drop-in yeah. home. So it's, yeah, it's not a cheap, um, you know, we've bought a log cabin, we're going to do it up. It is a, yeah. an actual... Theory, it keeps them... In the area, because it's quite a wooded area, isn't it? The Kenzie Road, yeah, for the back of it, will be it's to the rear. So, you know, so, yeah. and like I say, they're happy to have any condition put upon them as is necessary because it is to meet the needs of a family member. I think by not having a separate address and all that points to that thing it is being used for that purpose. Yeah. You know, yeah. at some point in the future, you don't know what's going to happen. You still use it as a Airbnb type so, yeah. so that you know, if if they were happy to have that condition imposed, I would like that sort of condition imposed. 
not for renting out like that. Any other thoughts? Um, Save so the rag, demolishing one to replace it. Yeah. Take the old ones, you're repairable. I think it's probably not That's suitable for the what yeah. use they've got. It's easier just to demolish an old outfield and actually something appropriate. They're often like plastic outer, and, uh, whatever the cladding point, I guess. And we have a family member that builds those, and their um, level access so they're great for elderly people to yeah. move around and yeah. so we're having to support um obviously they've mentioned a, a condition of not renting out i'm happy to put that forward just ask what the objection is to that um i, I think there's enough airbnb type properties i think it'd be great <laughs> to have proper planning for things and use the local bnbs and local hotels um, where there's proper regulations Sorry. Sorry about that. As long as they keep it in domestic use rather than commercial housing. So support uh, my, um, on the condition that the um, appropriate uh, support yeah. um, subject to an appropriate condition Fishing restricting use. the use of the annex to only ancillary. Yeah. Good family or ancillary use. Can I just ask if there aren't if there isn't a separate address given to this, does that affect its rateable value in terms of the taxation of the property? Normally, if it is a separate address, then there would be the valuation okay, office would come in and they'd come and look at the, the valuation of that property. Um, here, it will be added to the existing property when the, if they ever do relate it. It's usually, um, if you do make a major alteration to a building, then they will re-rate it. Generally, if it's just an ancillary add-on, it's not really picked up. This is a prefab in Altmont can considered to be a very fancy share. Yeah. Mm. Mm. <laughs> because that's, that's what it There'll is. There'll be additional demand on the on resources side with additional people living in the property. Mm. Yeah, but they're saying there's no separate utility or services. But so. More rubbish generated and things like that. So. That would all come under the main households costs. Yes. Okay. So we're happy that support, but ask for the yeah, condition so that put, it may yeah. left us there. Uh, just repeat I what we've got support there. Subject to an appropriate condition restricting the use of the annex to only ancillary for family members. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Thank you. On to F then. Burns close. Right. So five five eight. This is a front porch infill extension plus internal garage conversion to habitable rooms. So this is the site map. Yeah. See the the difference in these plans. So this is the um, uh, proposed, and this is um, that's the existing. And this is the proposed. What's the main has got the similar extension of the mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Actually, that's that's it. We're in filling the porch, and then converting the garage into rooms, so there's no external changes. Thing. Let's see if they do use the garage, then there is a, another thing on parking. But generally, people don't use the garages because they're too small for the cars that we yeah, got nowadays. So, it's no Yeah, yep. yep.
Down to G, which is the end. So, uh, yeah, so this is the election of one two bedroom dwelling in what was the uh, Anglia House Business Centre 2426 Street. 20 years ago, this was Lloyds Bank and um, used by the grammar school for quite a bit. In recent years, it's been used as a, a business centre, service offices. It's for those that know, it's a little cut through by the grammar school, um, which is pedestrian only. To the left, there's a bit of scrub area, which was mentioned at full council last time we, we met. Um, we have had this up before, um, and they, they tried to cram a few more dwellings in the back there, which we objected to because of the need for the overdevelopment. Um, so this is purely the erection of the dwelling rather than the conversion of the existing building, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. So um, there has been comments from the um, uh, Historic Environment Officer and that is along the lines of um, making sure that um, a correct programme of archaeological mitigatory work is put in place in accordance with the National Planning Policy Framework. Um, and Basically, that goes along the lines of no development shall take place until an archaeological writ scheme of investigation has been submitted and approved by the local planning authority in writing. Um, and that no development shall take place other than according with the written scheme of investigations approved therein. So there's a request that a brief for the archaeological work can be obtained from North Council Norfolk. A brief for what needs to be done in the archaeological work could be obtained from the Norfolk County Council. But they charge for their services. The turning area, that's obviously the gate just before. So that's the middle Yeah, so the, the little driveway comes up alongside that cut route, and um, it's quite tight when you get the, to the end there. Yeah. It's a king to what the previous scheme they were putting forward was. <laughs> There's only one dwelling going in yes. there, though. Um, so obviously they've etched a little carving next door to it, <laughs> and they're keeping a couple of spaces to service the existing building. Do we have any thoughts? Piece of land that we have this issue with. Just anything to do with this? No, I think that I think you'll find that piece of land with the. I mean, it still belongs to the grammar school. It does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, I was going to hope that's because we could put a condition on it. I'll take a piece of land over the door. I've got some photographs here. They're not really <laughs> very helpful. No. Yeah. It's not a bit there, really. Looking at it, you think oh, it's quite a big space, but I think there's really big space. Yeah. This is up that corner where the, the, the dwelling's going to go, but it's um, got a single you know, route in with the car. So they have to utilise that turning area to, to come out. Just that property doesn't have any outside space or anything, does it? No, it's just we haven't got any. So, um, so it is what well, that's in um, a courtyard on a roof terrace because yeah, it is literally oh, it's got a tiny little slice of garden. Well, that's where the car's going to go. That's where the car is. Yeah, that's where the car is. Okay, so when it goes on to this one, oh, yes, all right, yes. Yeah. So, it's, or, although there is still a, a wee slice on there, isn't there? there? <laughs> I know that was that little bit at the. Uh, it's it's oh, it's it's a little bit at the. 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 It's a little b
So it is the erection of a two bedroom dwelling. I would have thought that would have been acceptable without any more detail. It says in total the site extends for approximately 616 square metres with approximately 325 square metres being driveway. So half, more than half of it is driveway. <laughs> Anything. No, literally, this is what I've got in here. Because yeah. sometimes you it's the building to it. Well, the, the site is scheduled, so that will be because the conservation of the found in that vicinity quite a lot to do with the grammar school site. That's, and that, that's the why they need that archaeological mm -hmm. dig, so it has to be a condition to put on it. The frontage, I don't think, is listed. Let me of the old. Can I just clarify something? Has 24 to 26 already been approved as change to residential? The rest of the area. 24, the, the existing office is, has already been approved to change to uh, residential. The, I can't the, remember. The change of use was granted. Um, the consent was granted for the erection of a two story dwelling to the rear in 2015. And change of use from offices to three residential apartments was in 2012. And 2022 was change of use from offices to residential. So the whole thing is going to become residential. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, so the existing offices will know. Right, okay. That's going to put a bit more pressure on If I can find any more on the portal. So I remember this coming up. I can't remember who that went through, but obviously it did. Yeah. Um, and I'm wondering that it would be interesting getting trucks down there, building lorries yeah. and things. I'm just wondering if this has come up because they haven't started the erection of the dwelling that was previously given consultation. So it lapses over like no, three no, years. So they now have come back with this. Um, whereas the conversion and stuff has happened, and you know, that's right. But because they didn't start on the the new dwelling, then the the yeah. um, condition lapses. The layout says approved from a approved change of use from office to residential. Yeah, on there. That's, that's obviously it's that intention. That. So that's what's there now, isn't it? Oh, you can't see this one. Isn't it? And you see that's what's there now. Oh yeah. So. On the current 24, 26, it's on residential. Is that not up on there? It is up on yeah. there. Yes. Yeah. Two. The existing yeah. building is converted to three. three. Yeah. And this is for the next. So, the one 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 the so that's on the so another two. Right. So we've got a bit of detail on the layout here. Right, yeah. so that's fine. Yeah, let me just let me just do something fancy. Yeah. I mean, you think that three is already there, isn't it? Yes. It is up on the board. Yeah. Right. Oh, it's it's really yeah. Yeah. It's a space. Yeah. Fair enough. Let me go back to my meeting. Mm -hmm. Whether or not I'm going to just put it on. Yeah. Yeah. I think of the flats the girls used to rent. Um, I mean, the, the one comment I would make on there, although there's other, you can see other properties, there are other properties, so that's that's why I'm a bit important. Oh, so whatever happens, yeah. Can you see these? You've got them, thank you. Yeah. Uh, the only way they're going to get out is by reversing, reversing back out, out, out to yeah. so reversing out onto the bit. Now, if you think of it, that's the bit where the road narrows. Yeah, uh, and it's also the bit where there's a speed hump and all the kids come yes. out and it's schools. Yes, so that that would be where I would object to it. I think it's not really obvious. suitable for the. Yeah. Isn't there a turning circle? Coming out of the there, was, there was a little turn so yeah, yeah. yeah, but that was quite like the idea. You can sort of come in there and turn yeah. so here yeah. and go pointy end out. Yeah. Okay. Is that not parking for the other residents? I think that on the plan they weren't here marked parking for that specific area. Go back to the plan. Probably two or three guys. 
Yeah. That's not parking yet, is it? Because there's, a, you know, there's something to lean to or something that's still there. Is that, oh, that's what we need to watch. It's parking and turning. Yeah, so, so there's a lot of to goes along here. Yeah. So is that interesting or is that yeah. kind of yeah. ghost? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, great interest. It does, it does show existing turning, so I'm happy with it. Sorry, Tim, go back to design. Great design to me is quite more This one? Or that one? You had the layout of the building. Oh, that's all right. Other way. Yes, sorry. So we've got a roof terrace here. The bedrooms are on the ground floor, two bedrooms, and then we've got a kitchen dining area upstairs with a roof terrace. And then I think you had more of a flat roof. Is that on there? Roof Terrace overlook Roger Bigot. Okay. Yeah. Roof Terrace so, overlook Roger Bigot Muse, though. Yes, it probably will. Look. So, so, yeah, so it's a bit down here, won't it? Yeah. It doesn't really add to my architectural interest. It's too crammed in there, isn't it? Well, yeah, so the, they're like the roof terrace faces that way. Yeah. yeah. It's funny that the kitchen turn on the top and the one bedroom is yeah. actually on the ground. It's usually the other way around. Faces what you get uh, bigger. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So they put living room upstairs for better views. Well, I suppose if we had the. Um, the downstairs, there's no windows. Okay. No, yeah. I know, I know this sounds a bit, I sound a bit stupid, mm. but you've got a roof terrace overlooking a school, isn't that not a little bit? It's looking at the uh, flats, the apartments that have been built. Yeah. That's actually away from the, 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 the school building. That's not a solid wall. Right. Mm. Right. 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 Matt, right, um, we said about the is it is the the turning this circle then? Well, <laughs> not really. Uh, if you see here, they've got two bits of concrete. I just don't think that the design of that is in keeping with the area. Thoughts, ladies and gentlemen. With the three properties being put into 24 to 26, this could be seen as over to that small area. Why is currently there being a rubbish disposal for the current three ones? And that one, I know they have a little paved path. And there's, I must say, there are two little bins we put together. Two little bins for the new one. Yeah, for the new one. But first, uh, currently, the other ones are there. They're still around the back, isn't it? Away from this new building? They are around the back. Yeah. Mm. Right. But not, it's not, really not, this wouldn't be like, I'm assuming this is being built beside it. For huh? so those courtyards, each of them have a big art suspect within it. Okay. There's no possibility of access from London Road. I think that's not. Yeah. Okay. That's a bit of a long one. Mm. I think Ronald's also picked up on when they're doing the building works, where does all the all the big lorries and work and stop? It's going to be hard. For it's not exactly the widest road, is it? I don't think we can object to what happens in the building process. We can only object to the the end result. So really, that's for them to work out. Just whether but, or not that structure is going up. That's, that's yeah. the question, isn't it? So firstly, do we want to object? Can I see a show of hands in favour of, of objecting? Yeah. yeah. So three, four, and those who want to support. Okay. Three. So we've got four against three, Chris and Hazel. Just to wake up, but just you want to just go to the not fit you in, but you won't see it really because it's back. Well, you will see a bit of it. 
I'll switch to the objection. Basically, the point that there is very tight on parking, like Max said about well, they need to reverse it as well. That is a very high level with all the kids that are often in school. It is it just becomes a tension area. Um, you know, sooner or later somebody gets distracted and maybe run over putting cars in and out. It's gonna be a constant it's, it's just it's just a lot in one small place. I'm also a bit concerned about the fact the roof terrace does have a little bike on a boot. That does concern me a bit, so I'll make the premise that you know I'm looking. I'm not concerned about uh, the roof, please. I, I can't remember how high the wall um, goes. Is it? Yeah, it's not. Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll look at So I think we've got a majority in favour of objecting. Do we then need to put the grounds that we are objecting? We've talked, somebody's talked about as development. Yes, mm -hmm. There's parking concerns regarding the traffic you know, access to, to the special property and back, considering that it's a small, as a short street with, with a school beside. Is a, what do you want to put? So in a narrow street, very well used with a, with a school with a lot of children crossing. So, so the fact that the, the people will would be limited to parking that to reverse into the main road becomes there is sufficient parking or turning area for property. Which would for lead, lead to <laughs> potential <laughs> property. Um. I, ju I just think if we were looking at this anywhere else, um, and that this development was added on to others, we would say it's massively overdeveloped because I think it's so yeah. tight. Yeah. That's, that's so that's crammed in. It's a small space, a lot going on in there. I'll just check from a process perspective. I would I would have expected the highways to be people who would object on the grounds yeah. of safety. Is that they, they, what? I can't think of one occasion where they've objected on a safety point. Yeah, they, they usually I Not one. Going, so, uh, as an example, when you know one of the places we always talk about is London Road, where you've got BM, where you know people can't get out. There's, you know, a lot of accidents on there where people are trying to rush out and all that stuff. It was suggested very early on that yeah. roundabout or, or lights would make sense. They just they don't see it as a problem. Mm -hmm. so they can just wait their turn. Do you mention that all the rubbish then on pickup day comes they wheel it back into the main road or to the front? On the bins will have to be put out of Bridge Street. Pull out the Bridge Street to clean yeah. it. So I don't think you can avoid the that. Fact, the fact that it'll be more but rubbish be thrown onto the main road at some point that require that. But at least they could be stored around the back, whereas yeah. the one we saw earlier with the Castle Street Cafe, there's just nowhere yeah. for them to be. Yeah. I was still checking, and, and highways haven't entered the comment at all. Chris. Let's have a look at the two wheel packs. This wouldn't separately, but overlooking lots of riders definitely need to think about objectives. Yes, yeah. Because I'm scratching the bridge. And also, she may have a density of building. She said it didn't have the shape of the building. And highway safety, truck parking, and traffic issues. She's parked in the Are you reading your material considerations? Yeah, yeah. Two house points for Chris. I think it's the architectural merits of the And I'm wondering, I mean, well enough they put the roof terrace on top. Whoops, there's no property not to abstract the vision from the current three there in the, the main building. Won't they take like yeah, sunlight or, or vision? I don't think there's much coming from that way um, because it's somehow it comes from the south. This doesn't block the views of the current so we've got over development, insufficient parking and turning area for property, layout and density of the building, roof terrace overlooking yeah. neighbouring property. Neighboring property. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Well, to that to the I think highway safety comes in on that one. Yeah. Would emergency services have a problem getting to this property? Yeah, that can be another one. They just stop on the road when they walk up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the same issue. The difficulty they have to come in reverse. So this is that to do the same thing. The same issue. You live in my street, they'd have to run up the road anyway because you can't get anything up there. <laughs> just wait, I'll wait to have them. Hopefully, 
suppose the difficult thing for me here is, if, you know, when we object to it, and I do think I, I would object to it, what else would you do with it? Yeah. That's, that's the difficult thing. Yeah. You know, what else would you do with it? I, how, would you, how would you fix our, our concerns? Mac, I want to be this doesn't even exist yet. Just... Maybe there shouldn't be anything. More yes, but space for the existing. They can come up with another. There's a building there already. Oh. Yes, but that could be left as an amenity space for the for the current the, the new the, the three three. It hasn't been developed yet. Yes. Yes. They've got no nothing other than courtyard. Uh, unless they need to build another dwelling to make it stable. Financially viable. To develop it, well, yeah. I think it's probably just getting as much so as I can. I think we're not happy to do that. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I, the architectural design, I think, is something that I would like to I think. That it's a flat roof. Um, there's everything else in that facility is fish roof. And I wonder if they put on the flat roof so it doesn't get the height. If you look at it on there, the, the ridge of the, the property to the left. Is almost as high as the double one that we're, the front roof they're putting up. So if they went to a pitched roof, that would then make it probably too high. But I still think it's not in keeping with it. So that's the surrounding layout and density of building with design, visual appearance, and finishing materials. Also, by putting that flat roof, or the way they've designed it, they've given maximum use of that upstairs area. They've got an outside seating space. They've got windows. You know. It's, um, I think they've done it very well. But I'm of the opinion it's another infill. Well, that's what I think it is. That's why I was. You know, I mean, you had to think the front building, yeah. so that no, no we should get into use because we don't want empty buildings down there. But to look at the back, no, it's an infill. I could sit with my angler. <laughs> <laughs> So I need do, to do, do we need to limit ourselves to what we we actually object about because there might be just an awful lot of noise rather than a specific point we're making? Well, I, I would say that um, if we stick to the material considerations, they are stronger planning objections than other objections. Okay. Yep. So at the moment, you've got overdevelopment. The insufficient parking and turning of properties are a high risk issue or, or high, as a safety issue. So you've got the layout and density of the buildings with a flat roof that should be changed to a pitch roof. And got the roof terraces that overlooking neighbouring properties. There's another material consideration you feel. It's appropriate. Would you like me to give you my call? Well, no, that's just from Mr. Burns' conversation. But there's no uh, complaint about that. Uh, I'm not sure the insufficient parking and turning. I don't feel like that's a bit harsh. They've got a parking space and they've got a turning space mm. for, a, mm. for a small dwelling. I kind of feel like, you know, what, what else would we expect of them? Even have a car. Yeah. Town centre location. Yeah. Yeah, there's no bike. Plenty of public transport. Bike park. <laughs> 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 that car park is not a material yeah. I could turn on time. <laughs> You've got that layer of noise. Yeah. Flat roof. Flat roof to a pitch yeah. roof. Yeah. Yeah. So design building. Not in keeping with the surrounding. Not in keeping with surrounding. Yeah. With character of surrounding. So, did we want to keep the parking thing? That, not that you. I, I'm, I'm happy to leave it because, you know, otherwise we, we're just saying too many things. I think you've got to be pointed in what we want to complain about, and. I think that's, I mean, that's funny. Mm -hmm. So overdevelopment, um, layout and density of buildings, mm -hmm. not in keeping with a character of surrounding mm -hmm. environment. Yeah. And you want to keep the roof terrace on? Overlooking one. Yeah. Yeah. Overlooking, I think. Yep. Yeah. Okay. 
Right, should we park that there? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and we've just got a turning space for get out of it. We'll be fine. Yeah, you turn it. <laughs> you turn it. <laughs> okay, we move on to H then. Uh, okay. 1076. This lands the rear of 57 Barry Road. Yeah, so mm -hmm. the conversion of annex and outbuilding to two dwellings and erection of two dwellings to all the existing vehicular access, creation of new vehicular access, and protection of landscaping. And this is an amendment, and the amendment is the submission of the heritage addendum and agricultural implications assessment and preliminary method statement. So our previous objections were overdevelopment with small house and amenity sizes. And we supported the highway officer's comments and conditions with the exception of mill lanes classification, which needed revision due to the large volume of traffic. Concerns about destruction of a scheduled ancient monument in a conservation area, which is why these reports were requested. And we supported Historic England's comments. Uh, several of the residents have commented, particularly around road safety and the potential for one and twelve ramp, but I'm not quite sure whether that's evidence. And comments tend to reference displays, footpaths, and roads not <coughs> being wide enough. And concerns again have been relayed about archaeological concerns about damage or loss. Potential artifacts. So these are the sites. So, in terms of it's not changing anything that's previously gone, this is purely no, submitting the heritage and then the, and the agricultural implications. So, it's rather, still think that they're so they're jumping through a couple them. more hoops yep. um, to get this um, through. So, would we? Um, be correct in stating we just reaffirm our existing objections. You can do but one of those is about the historical um, area. So I guess it is whether they think that the um, but uh, submitted paperwork has reduced those the heritage addendum, whether that has actually reduced concerns or not. So that heritage addendum is purely just a background information type of thing. It doesn't make sure that they're going to have a watching brief or a full dig um, as part of it. Let's have a look. There's quite a bit of it, 16 <laughs> pages. So... Um, it's the very right about it. Hang on. Yeah. So this... Right, yeah. yeah, so the heritage statement was by Richard Hoggett, who I think I know, it uh, addresses the concerns raised by James Hubbard of Ancient Monuments Historic England. Can be. Can be like what he wanted to be. So this is the site of the ancient church, and it's not been excavated yet. It's never been excavated. It has in the park, yeah. Because we've been as it all and stuff, yeah. We've not fully yeah. excavated. Yeah. But it's on the grounds of the church. The old church. So when they did Watermill Green, there was a big, big tap there, uh, and it's then a butt. Right. Yeah. So the proximity of the area lends itself to that there could be something okay. quite, quite large yeah. there. There yeah. was some bodies. That's a really rare arrow shot in. Yeah. It says um, I can't remember the, the proposed yeah. route of the access road was subject to archaeological trial trenching undertaken by Britannia Archaeology in July 2019. And um, the report has been submitted in support of the application. The evaluation successfully identified the cemetery, which is probably that of St. Ethel readers, although no foundations or structural evidence of this church were present on the site. And only the presence of plant fragments within the evaluation suggested the possibility of a large structure nearby. In response to directions from the Norfolk Historic Environment Services and Historic England, several barriers were lifted during the course of the evaluation, and those remain in the keeping of the Britannia archaeology. So, um, Historic England has previously indicated that they had no objection in principle to the proposed development, 
and highlight that whilst it was likely the applicant would be able to use this area for access to development, it would be necessary for the road to be designated so that it was above the level of any significant archaeological remains. This included the impact on foundations and any necessary services. And historically, England advised that such design could allow any archaeological remains related to the church or human burial to be preserved in situ beneath the proposed access. Mm. So a floating road. Yeah. Uh, this has been discussed the board several times. I'll get a bond, you know, due to the fact that I'm on Preston Fleming, when this comes up at Preston Fleming, I have to leave the room. Yes. Because I'm objecting on my comments, yeah. probably supporting the residents. Mm -hmm. So I have to go in the predetermined or whatever the word is and think, so I have to go away. But, I mean, we originally, oh. we originally wanted the access to come out on the very road, which we refused because it's dangerous. I said no. Uh, the major issue to you know, it's the Mill Lane track, and the, that is a through busy road. And I don't, you know, don't understand how Norfolk County Council say it's a rural lane. No. Well, we've had several complaints. Yeah. I've written to Norfolk County Council myself and say this is a road that is really busy. Mm. But they don't seem to accept that. Fact. What I would suggest is we we uh, reiterate our previous objections, subject to the archaeological thing, which has now had a bit more guidance given to it. Um, we should then obviously back up what you're saying, Chris, that you're still you know, digging heels in on that one, which is... Well, I think it's just that it's business. not really the busyness of the lane, which is, it's that access between that bungalow type thing. You're coming out almost blind. Yeah, which is one of the comments that turned out to yeah. play there. There's not... Um, that's right. The, the, yeah. It's incredible to me that it's all the traffic codes will say that's a quiet road. So yeah. why do they put traffic car in it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just could never work that out. No, but then well, it's it's very road mill road because it's it's the road. It comes down on mill lane. The, the access by the bungalow is mm -hmm. mill lane, right. and it's it, it's reasonably quickly move, quick moving traffic, and it's 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 blind at that particular point. What is the north church? Well, the churchyard will be left in situ. You put a road, access road over the top of it, but so, you know, what the proposal is. But are we happy to object, or say, subject to what we've done in the past, um, reducing our objection in terms of the archaeological side, because that has been given some... So you want to say that um, previous TTC objection remain however uh, they recognize that archaeological concerns have been addressed where have they been addressed then? Well, they're there, they're, you know, remain. No. previous objections remain the archaeological so this this was one of our objections wasn't it yeah the archaeology and what they're doing is they're they're going to try and assuage us by doing that bit of archaeological dig to say, well, we've done that bit now, you know, yeah. let's move on. And then, you know, whittling down our objections, really. But the other thing still apply. That yes. Is the thing. Yeah. And it's the, you know, the, the traffic is, is major. I, I think if we do put in there, uh, if I may, that we're going to, our existing Temper Town Council staff still exists. We need to relist that. Just yeah. to make sure it's traffic. Yeah. Which yeah, includes the large volume of traffic. So um, yeah. And the displays, visibility displays. Yeah, interesting to go down there and just, just measure the width of that exit because it's 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 one car, it's not two cars. You can't get two cars going down there. When this did come up, we did have the dimensions um, yeah. discussed, didn't we? Yeah. Um, there's, there's, the, the, it's a very yeah, it's a foundation so you won't see. There's no no. It's where it was. Anyone they do the trial trenches did they come across the in fact you'll be and that's another thing we've talked about before you'll be very lucky to find a wall that's listed mm. on its own we've got some really old historic walls but they're not listed no the properties might be so if i've got previous objections remain extant and relist the objections. relist them yeah, yeah. especially okay. the high ones you want to put slack And I'll spell with large. Yes. 
<laughs> but don't suppose you've got those to hand, have you? The, the I can find them for you. I think then we all know what we are. We're letting ourselves in for. So, yeah, no. Objects of prison there. <laughs> what, it's an editor ring. How old, how old are you? <laughs> That's the first touch. You know where we're talking about. St Mary's Church. No, no. no. Uh, uh, in real life, the, the Mary's Church is on Berry Road. Can't you have to do that? That's why I'm too confused with Berry Road and Mill Road. Wait, so, 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 if you go along Berry Road now, it's between up 57 and 59, it's Gap. It's where Simmons Dairy used to be. But it can't you to go along it's between not. Skinner's and the no, church. No, 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 no. Between 57 and 59. Further along, okay? There's a gap between them two. Where Simmons Dairy used to be. You've got to go past it, the old funeral directors and the one that's still there. You've got to go past them to turn down it. Yeah. Oh, right. Beyond the church. Yeah. Oh. Our previous objection was the development of the council and community services. It's supported the highway officer's comments and conditions of the exception. Can we just say we go listen to the part? Yeah. Okay, so our previous, previous objections were. That it was an overdevelopment with a small house and amenity sizes. We supported the highway officer's comments and conditions, with the exception of Mill Lane classification, which needs revision due to the large volume of traffic. Concerns about construction of a schedule for ancient monument in a conservation area, and that we supported his so fellow people's comments. When the, when the heritage officer, or I can't remember the title, has reported and said, it's fine, you can put a road on the top of it and carry on. Is there any point of us still objecting to on that point? On um, the you know, I guess it's the there. fact that the, the person who said that is the consultant that the that the planning, the, the company that's applying for it have used it, who is a well-renowned consultant that, you know, is used regularly <laughs> Um but we don't but, know but, whether that's been accepted by the site. No, but we, you know, the council is still allowed to have its own opinion okay. on that. Okay. Right, thank you. Have we not changed the thing that we do not support the highway? Well, you support the other comments on highways, don't you? Uh, I'm concerned about the comments on. Let me just go back and find Because, I mean, there are other comments that are certainly not a rule. Do we want to reiterate that? Filling a road over the top of everything doesn't address the concerns. Okay. That's a few uh, like Investigation of the site. The thing mm. is, is there's a whole document on it, and mm. they are talking about. I mean, I've just picked things yeah. out of okay. it. It's like a 16-page document. Did send it out. Um. So what did they say? The um, they said that um, the applicant has demonstrated that a visibility of 2.4 times 43 meters is available to the south of the access, the approaching traffic direction, and 2.2 meters by 43 meters the access without crossing third-party land. The provision of a 2.4 parallel visible display across the third side frontage. Not 2.2, as shown on previous drawing, will have added the highway safety benefit of securing visibility for number 22 Mill Lane in the approaching traffic direction, as well as number 24 to the south of the site. Whilst the 4.5 metre access width would allow two cars to pass, it would not allow a car and delivery vehicle to pass. He therefore recommends that, notwithstanding the submitted details, the access should achieve 4.8 metres for the first 10 metres. And he said, if you're, if you're minded to grant the approval, please impose the following conditions. And that's prior to the first occupation um, permitted. The access crossing shall be constructed in accordance with a detailed scale to be agreed in writing with the local planning authority. That the minimum width of 4.8 for the first 10 metres and thereafter retained at the position shown on the approved plan. Arrangements shall be made for surface water drainage to be intercepted and disposal of separately so that it can does not discharge from or onto the highway. So vehicular access to and egress from the adjoining highway shall be limited to the access from Mill Lane only. The access onto Berry Road shall be permanently closed to vehicular traffic and the footway shall be reinstated in accordance with the detail scheme to be agreed with the local planning authority. 
and the last, a couple more prior to the first occupation the development um, permitted a 2.5 meter parallel visibility splay as measured back from the rear edge of the adjacent highway shall be provided across the whole of the site's roadside frontage and the splay shall thereafter be maintained at all times free from any obstruction exceeding 1.05 metres above the level of the adjacent highway carriage. Prior to first occupation, the development hereby permitted the proposed access parking and chair in that area shall be laid out, demarcated, levelled, surfaced and drained in before um, anything start uh, and the occupation and development shall not commence until a scheme detailing provision for on-site parking for construction workers and for the delivery and storage of materials for the duration of the construction period has been submitted to and approved in right of the local planning authority. And oh, we're still going, sorry. Um, so, uh, and the last one is notwithstanding the details indicated on the submitted drawings, no works above slab level shall commence on site unless otherwise agreed in writing until detailed, until detailed drawings for the widening of the footpath along the mill lane frontage and closure of access onto Berry Road have been submitted and approved. So, they're the comments we agreed with previously, except for we didn't consider it to be a quiet road that we thought that needed to be reviewed because it is in fact a busy road. And on the bit here on the displaying for the visibility and stuff, that's great if nothing decides they're going to park on that road. You know, there's no double yellow lines. Anyone can park a car on that road and their visibility areas are just gone because a van's decided to park there or a car's decided to park there. I think it's hazardous. I think that's wrong. There, there were two trailers on that road for a, a very long, long time. Long time. Yes, yeah. there were. Long time. Yeah. yeah. It took ages to get in there. There's always not always, but there's very, very frequently cars parked along there. And yeah, you know, they can say they'll do this, they'll do that, but anyone can park there at any time. There's no reason for us not to ask for parking restrictions to be put by that um, entrance. Because at the moment we've, we've not touched upon that, um, we, we we could say, yeah. I also request that parking restrictions be put on. So to maintain the visibility display. That yeah. I've done with yellow lines there already outside of the bungalow, mm -hmm. side of the VH Service Club. Mm -hmm. So we couldn't take them down. I mean, okay, the technical side of the highway is seen, I can't argue for some kind of extra. But I mean, it's just the classification of that road. Yeah, which we, we're still, I um, mean, yeah. um, against that classification, which we did work before. But I think the visibility display is something that, you know, the highway guy has got what the technical things are. But David's right, we can say that, you know, that they all <laughs> get rubbish if you've got a car park right at the entrance to it. So you, you do need to maintain the visibility. It's not going to be like bring on the verge, wait for the deliver. Okay, so I think we're there then. So previous, so as we said before, previous objections remain extant. Relist those and also request that um, parking restrictions be put on the entrance to prefer, to maintain the visibility. Preserve visibility at all times. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Okay. I'll do that quietly, so I'll pass them around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, in 74.23, then, late planning applications. Yes, there is only two that oh. I have actually sent out. And they're on the, um, the second, <laughs> the second one. So, the first one is, oh, let me just move this along. Uh, the first one is um, a change of branding signs at B&Q at the Forest Retail Park on Lungin Road. So that's the, um, is this, um, is this cuts, is it we've gone from extra strong minced to this, right. yeah. <laughs> Just wondering. Um, so, no, um, on, I'm just not as tight as it is. These are the current, the current signage. <laughs> And they are moving to, uh, this is the signs, 11 signs and places that they're changing the signage. 
and the posts they're putting them into? Should we be interested in the spec of the posts? So this is the new disabled parking spacing signage. None of the signage is illuminated. Uh, and then we have the new welcome boards. Existing and... I think it'll be straight at that one. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> I cannot confirm or deny if that will be the case. A DIY company. <laughs> yep. Uh, and this is the new delivery signage. And the new trolley park signage. Please don't ram our trolley park signage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm really surprised that that place has been able to, you come out of the front of that, the massive great heavy trolley, and it's slow. It's slow, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. We have drainage thing. So I think presumably it's just a supporter, are we? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 Okay. So the second one is for the old golf house veterinary group um, on Brandon Road. And they want to install mm. three new external air conditioning units. So this is the site. Um, you have to look very closely because it's very little. So this is where they're showing where the current air conditioning units are. And uh, the next one is in the little bits in pink. If you can see that, there's three. <laughs> so it's the same. Basically the same as the last one, but they've got this little pink one by the door at the bottom left as well. And uh, this is the existing. And like I said, you have to look very carefully because it's a teeny weeny map. Uh, or is it on there as well? I can't see on that one. Yeah, tiny pink bits that show you where the, the new bits are going to go on the elevations. Oh, no, wait a minute. Here we go. Can you spot them? Yeah. There's a pink bit there. Yeah. 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 So, so the only one from the road is south elevation, I think. So yeah. That's one of the ones that one. that's already there. Yeah. Yeah. We're happy to support. Yeah. I'd have to turn that noise <laughs> if there was any additional noise. That's all. We've got any data on that? It's quite a long way from the residents, mm. I would say. Well, the new units tend to be quite moderate and sound, as the cats deserve it. Well, <laughs> it's, it's, no. not, it's not far from the places on the Google map thing, but it's not far from the no. to be honest. No. Um, but that would be my only worry would be any additional noise if they're externally, if the motors are out, if the whole that whole unit's on the outside. The whole unit's on the outside. No, the fence are on the outside. I see your point, but it was very noisy. It would still do the animals coming in a car because they're better with, you know, less animals on a constant basis. It's going to be bell out. It's going to be a problem for that own work. So but we, we could support yeah. subject to um, if you know, object, any any objections from any, any of the neighbours? Don't think anything's come forward, is it? No. So, so you don't have it subject to neighbours. Yeah, it would be on their behalf, and if, if nobody else, mm. no yeah. local yeah. residents. I'm providing those levels are acceptable. So sub, uh, support and subject to neighbours' comments. I'm just wondering if it's either aims comments or do you go on the environmental health um, noise levels? There must be a level at which is accepted. Yeah, that is, that is, you know, level of it. I'm not sure what the limit is for the top work. The way that if they would have a line, they'd have to be able to hear and stuff. Yeah, of course. Well, 
Our internal alarm is a lot louder than that. <laughs> Uh, there, there hasn't been any additional requested, and there's no comments thus far. Thank you. Uh, I wouldn't request a caveat then if, if local residents haven't expressed any concern. I mean, subject to neighbours' comments is a fairly safe. Thinking reality. If we're terribly nice, they'll be probably the first one. Good point. Once it seems too late. Are you going to support? I think go to support. Um, and just I think demonstration that it's within the acceptable limits, of noise limits. Yeah. Subject to meeting noise yeah. requirements. Yeah. yeah. Just saying sort of thing on the practice, what you're on now. We did, yeah. Using environmental noise requirements, yeah. Noise or disturbance resulting from use, including proposed hours of operation. Pretty bland, really, isn't it? Yeah. The traffic noise is nothing like coming out of Okay. So that's those two then. So moving on to 7523 decisions of variance. Having a, uh, None of those. Okay, 7623. Items to be referred to the Greater Thetford Partnership. Last month we talked about the foam masts um, being something to be discussed. Greater Thetford Partnership hasn't met yet. The next trade week, I think, is the 7th of July. But I did put that in via the Thetford officer and directly to Theresa. I did ask a request that the people. So there's nothing Thank coming you. forward from this meeting and we want additional to be brought up. Okay. Well. I'm wondering if we could bring in the, the way that we, we had the county council looking at their transport strategy, and I think Terry's trying to get Robert to put forward a thing. But would that come through? Um, how Great Federal Partnership is going to support the cycling strategy? Because at the moment, there's no money for it. It's purely an off-the-shelf thing, isn't it? Because um, I don't know if you remember that GTP and Robert put into that as well, mm. the Dew State Green Infrastructure Report. Yeah. Um, so I have asked for that to be kind of like produced as another supporting paper we can look at, because there was a whole one done and I did a list of green projects, didn't I, from previous yeah. consultations. Yeah. But I was concerned that when we had the consultation with the Norfolk County Council up at the Sports Centre, it was quite clearly there was no money for this. They were just getting these things on the shelf potentially to, to be, whereas we ought to be pressing for something in the short term to, to improve what we inside the part of the right, partnership. Um, obviously, there's no money there, but. Yeah. <laughs> they managed to find money. They were going to find money and ask to make a consultation about the 20 million neighborhoods. I wonder if they could actually put the money from that consultation to actually make this cycle. So maybe we can just ask for an update. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that the, the county council are looking at this. If only it will give me a, a way of discussing with them. An update yeah. on GTP. So would you like me to write to Richard? And one investing in yeah. green alternatives and ask him to set up final consultations. County to ask him what he's proposed in time scale wise because I think I think because he was part of that development of the infrastructure yeah, paper as well. He's a bit pressure on a bit of that. Okay, seventy-seven twenty-three community engagement. Share it about. What about the success of the fish pass? Could that come over our planning bit? No, we don't. Ignore that then. No, because you, you don't even have to apply for planning permission because the planning authority is not the statutory authority. But under amenities, that could be brought forward. Yeah. Yeah. Let me do the site takeover on Thursday first and then we can start. Just in case. I've got to do the site takeover meeting on Thursday. Sign on the dotted line to take responsibility. Okay, seventy-eight twenty-three committee officers update. Um, the only thing I've got to update is um, 
money being a, a um, hot topic, I wrote to Breckland to check what our S106 oh, offers yes. look yeah. like, and there is nothing in our S106 coffers. Mm. We don't have any. Anything, anything. No. So when what people happens? plan things, usually they have to make a contribution for under section 106 to provide extra amenities if, if they've got a, okay. a, no play area, so it's a contribution out or local libraries. Or mm -hmm. So it could be a number of so, different hats that they get, but it's all been administered by Brexit. Many years ago, it all went into a pot. Yeah. More recently, they have earmarked it for the, the area or the town where the development happened. Um, we've always had this concern, well, you've earmarked this money, how is it ever spent? So yeah. we now follow up and say what Section 106 monies are still there to be spent yeah. for the benefit of them. Because um, in other places, they have still rather than S106. And um, the developers, like if they wanted money for a play park, the developers have the choice to either do the play park and manage the play park themselves or try and get somebody else to take over the responsibility for that. And um, recently, the recent ones we've had done, like down on Berry Road and things like that, the actual developers have taken the money themselves and done the actual play immunity themselves and kept the responsibility for it. The um, S106 money for the SUE remains with Breckland and with the land management company that is continuing to land because although we've taken over the parish, we as a town council have no responsibility for the maintenance of the land or any of the assets. Was that surprise there was no money? No. <laughs> Well, well, there is S106 money, but we're not managing any of the land, so it won't come to us. It will go to who is ever managing that. Okay. We do have a neighbourhood plan, local plan, don't we? We have a local plan. We don't have a neighbourhood plan. But it's right, and if we have a local plan, we can put in for them. Community infrastructure levy? They're still, we don't have still in no, we Breckland, don't, don't do still. Can, can we change to that for 106 or just Breckland? No, Breckland would have to. And we we have, remember, we didn't do a neighbourhood plan because we already had the Thetford Area Action Plan that's already been taken, uh, superseded by the local plan because basically they adopted the Thetford Area Action Plan into the local plan. So therefore, if we did a neighbourhood plan, it would still be below the local plan because the local plans already adopted our other plans. But still, you have the basically the just the planning authority can either do SIL or S106 and Breckland do S106. That's a shame because we could nominate stuff to spend still on. Yeah. Do we anticipate any S106 money coming from Kingsford? No. None at all. But no. the, the will be at six point six money, but it won't be coming to our net. It won't be coming to us because we so, don't manage the land. So some of that assets. I think is enhancement to the I eleven junctions of that, which will go to Highlands Authority that contribution, but it will never come via us. No, That's and it confuses me a little bit because the whole you know the, lim the limitations of the of, you know not being to clocks and make sure making things fit into pets were like bringing on more councils to cover there. So basically it became desperate. So why is the 106 and the money in the land going to Because we land? don't look after the land. So we don't look after the slave hooks. We don't look after the open spaces. We don't do the bins. We don't do so the street also, furniture. So who's currently doing all these things? Uh, I think it's... Pigeon. Pigeon, yeah. The, well, it's... Thetford money. Well, currently there is no it sign of that changing. You know, we, we as a council haven't put, you know, when the street lights came up, we said we, we don't want them because we can't afford to do it. You've got to give us no money to do it. So we're resistant on taking any more uh, responsibility. We've got no funding to go with it. We slow down in the housing market, the money stops. The house building stops. It's fun building and play park, but it won't be maintained forever. Uh, well, we don't have money to do that. Well, the, well, well, the thing is, is play parks are the responsibility of district by law. They started building a play park on Kingsley and then they stopped. Yeah. But 
it's not necessarily the local council that looks after the amenities because like cemeteries that's district as well mm -hmm. so they're the burial authority they're the planning authority so all the play parks and everything street lighting all that belongs to district so, but it, but currently it is the Thetford Management Group or whatever they call themselves that manage all the open space and all the amenities and all the street furniture. So we, as a town council, are not responsible for the maintenance of anything on that. So in other words, That's just it's Chris dead. coming. <coughs> what about the allotments? No, no, that's them as well because allotments, well. allotments have don't have to be town council. They can be anybody. I thought we had a statute, didn't we? It's been our mandate, isn't it? It's been our remit. No, you only, you don't have to. No. It's on our website that we do. We have to provide what we are responsible right. for, which is what we do. Yeah, the ones over there, we're not going to be. No, because we're, yeah, because yeah. we don't, we, we're not responsible for the land. Oh, that's a bit bad. Not too bad then. <laughs> Carla, sorry. No, that's all right. I was just going to say, is I have any peculiar that um, if it comes to Esther, the residents will complain to Esther to pay local authority, which is a Esther Town Council, but ultimately we don't manage anything and we have no saying on anything. But the, the residents will still come to us because yeah. it's become part of Esther. We can't win. Mm -hmm. The thing is, is then the councillors will redirect to the appropriate management people. Um, uh, and I don't, I don't know what the long-term plan for that is. Fretton Council may be in a better position for It's similar that. to Cloverfield, really. We've got yeah. very little as a town council on Cloverfield yeah. um, that we're responsible for. Most of that's Fretton as well. Yeah. Great. Well, thank everybody for their attendance. I'm calling meeting closed. Thank you all very much. Thank you, sir. We're losing here. I would like to say, I'll just take this for this. Yeah. Good. Thanks to Alan and Tina well for, uh, <laughs> for setting it up. <laughs> <Wait>. <laughs>